welcome back to part eight of this very massive <laughs> crash course on clinical trial coordination and management. So in part eight, we will be talking about the various software tools that you need to know about in order to run a clinical trial. Now, of course, every hospital or clinic will have their own software to have all their patient information. This is known as an EMR, Electronic Medical Record System, or an EHR, Electronic Health Record System. Now, depending on the company who built the software, they might have different names. In Canada, where I work, we use Epic, which is very popular. I've also used Meditech. There's various other software tools available, but don't be scared by the name. In an interview, if you're confused, just say, oh, is that an EMR system? Yes, I have worked with other EMRs before, or no, I haven't worked with EMR systems, but I know there's a few out there, and I'm, you know, I'm so familiar with other software, so that there's a lot of ways you can handle these interview questions. But essentially, you should know an electronic medical record system is where all of the patient's information, medical history, blood test, everything, every vital sign ever, all the patients, like, all the doctors you've seen within this hospital, all the nursing notes, all the physio notes, everything is kind of in one system. So that's one of the software skills you should be aware of, you know, an electronic medical record system that may be relevant in your clinical trial. Now, a lot of hospitals that haven't moved on to digital are still using physical files for each patient. So I won't get too much into that. Other than that, the second one we talked about in this video series a lot is the EDC, which is the electronic data capture system. So this is a software not specific to your hospital. So remember the EMR was owned by your institution, by your site, and it's very protected, it's very confidential, it has all this patient information. The EDC is a software that is owned by the pharma sponsor. Again, EDCs can come in various different names. I have used so many iMedi data, like so many different ones from different companies. You know, they're custom built for the study, but essentially the EDC is owned by the pharma sponsor and it is a kind of database where you have to do data entry to give very specific data values from the patient visits to the pharma sponsor. So you will not give patient name, you will not give patient medical history, you will not give, um, unless it's like super specific and relevant to the study, you will, won't give patient's phone number address, no. You will ha just have your subject number and you will know this subject correlates to this patient of mine and you will enter things like, okay, on this visit, vital sign was this, just the values. On this visit, the ECG report is this attached. On this, you know, everything de-identified without the patient's identifiers and only things that are relevant to the study. You won't give like five years ago, patient had this thing, no. As long as those are not inclusion and exclusion criteria, you shouldn't be giving any unnecessary information about the patient to this. EDC. So the EDC is basically a software where you do data entry in order to give visit specific information to the pharma sponsor. Now sometimes in EDCs you might enter a value it's not matching or it's showing oh this value is so high this patient shouldn't be in this study. So you know something is wrong so they are recognizing it from the back end. In that case they will generate something called a query. When a query is open, it will kind of flash at you, it will give you an error sign and you'll have to read what they're saying. So, so the EDC is often very interactive and you know, by answering the queries, you can like have communication with the backend and resolve a lot of matters. They might say, oh, why wasn't this test done on this day? And then you will respond in your query and say, we have already addressed this in our protocol deviation report. Uh, it's because, well, a pregnancy test was not done because patient was male. Once you've entered that, you know, or, you know, or patient was postmenopausal and sterile. So you don't have to do the pregnancy test. So you can like click that. So a lot of the times these queries generate on EDC platforms. Other than that, you might have other softwares you have to be comfortable with in order to order materials from this pharma sponsor. They might have specific places to order um, various kits for blood work or kits for urine or materials for shipping. You will also have maybe third or fourth softwares where you have to do randomization of patient visits where you enter the patient's latest weight or you know latest state and then they will calculate, okay, based on these parameters, this is the group, the randomized group. So you might be blinded to it when the patient is randomized to be like either in the placebo group or in the drug intervention group. You won't know it, the PI won't know it, Maybe only the pharmacist will know it and the pharma sponsor will know it. So sometimes we have to just enter patient information. They do the randomization on their own. They do the drug calculation on their own and they send it off to actually um, the pharmacy or whoever is not blinded to start preparing the drug. 
So you might have some randomization softwares. You might even have softwares which are relevant to various labs. So for example, the diagnostic tests, you are usually not the ones running them. Either you're giving them to another external vendor or you're shipping them off to a central lab where the diagnostic tests are being run. But a lot of the times they will become visible to you and your site so you can go through them. Anything that's out of the ordinary, you should definitely share with the PI and see if this is clinically significant. Oh my God, he's like, kidney function is like through the roof or his liver function is like failing. So these might also be side effects. A lot of the times you can't see all of the side effects when the patients are in there in the clinic with you. There is no rash, there is no breathing difficulty, blah, blah, blah. But the blood work is another way of kind of seeing if the patient is doing poorly or not having good health outcomes. So that's something the PI, uh, the investigator, the physician has to kind of keep an eye on. So a lot of the times you have to routinely check all these lab reports, get them signed and have the physician take off like no it's not clinically relevant so these were some of the different software tools that you have to be familiar with or just have an idea of a lot of the times the job description itself will mention some of the names like oh must be familiar with epic must be familiar with red cap must be familiar with i data but honestly as long as you know the concepts it's fine they know not everybody will know every different custom software built for their company that's perfectly fine they know there's a lot of different private vendors who build these software so they come in different names but they do essentially the same function as long as you have a little bit of experience and you can say i have used these many different things in these many previous roles you're good. So that was it for our point number eight, which is the software tools. I will see you in the next part of this video for point number nine, which is a reporting format.